Hello and welcome to EBC Online. My name's Megan and today we've got part two of our series, Love, Love, Love. Tom is going to come and talk to us on the topic of I Have Loved You. But we're going to start with a song, so please do join in at home. The words are going to come up on the screen. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. As we come into your presence, we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above. Lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing. Lord, we've come to give you thanks for all you've done. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom forever with because of your love as we come into your presence we remember every blessing that you poured out so freely from above lifting gratitude and praises for compassion so amazing but we come to give you thanks for all you've done because of your love we're forgiven because of your love our hearts are clean we lift you up with songs of freedom forever we because of your love You're the one who is making us new. You're the one who is bringing us healing. We owe it all to you. You're the one who has given us freedom. You're the one who is making us new. You're the one who is bringing us healing. We owe it all to you. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we change. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. You are with songs of freedom forever we change because of your love. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know about you, but I find love. So flipping confusing. And I'm not just talking about how to describe what the feeling of love actually is, because that is a whole other barrel of confusion. Now, the word love has so many different cultural and social connotations, it can mean a million and one different things. We got love for God, romantic love. Love between friends, the love one might have for one's country, sibling love, paternal love, maternal love, 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 love. And on top of all of that, Jesus tells us as Christians to love Christians. Gross, I know. It sounds easy enough, doesn't it? It should be a breeze to love people who follow the same faith as us, because we'll always have that same baseline to relate to. But I'm pretty sure everyone can think of at least one person in the church they've struggled with at some point in their life. 
Of course, uh, never this one. We're perfect here. It's so easy for us as Christians, when we're struggling with someone, getting annoyed at someone, to just shrug it off. Try and ignore it. Push it to the back burner because we only ever see them on a Sunday. So who cares if they hurt our feelings? But is that love? It's basically lying to them and yourself week after week after week. Never finding resolution. And I know it's terrifying and a lot of effort to try and talk to someone and admit that they hurt you or that you have an issue with something they've done or are currently doing. But it's essential if we're going to love one another. Paul, a convert to early Christianity, points this out in a letter to believers in Rome, saying that love must be sincere. Hate what's evil. Cling to what's good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. I feel it's so easy to be dishonest with other Christians because there's this expectation that we put on ourselves that if your life isn't going well, then you're not being Christian enough. A couple of years ago, someone who was very dear to me died. Now, I was an active member of my church in Winchester at the time. I was heavily involved in all aspects of church life. I should have been able to process the emotions easily. But I didn't talk to them about it. I bottled it up. Granted, a couple of people did ask if I was okay after they heard what had happened, but I just gave generic responses, played it off as if I was fine when actually I wasn't. And eventually, people stopped asking. And I became increasingly bitter that people weren't asking me about it. That I was still hurting, but they seemed to have stopped caring. Was it a difficult time? Yes, most definitely. My third year uni experience broke me in many ways. Was I justified in my bitterness? Well, I'm sure at the time I could have convinced you why I was. Was I being loving towards them? Definitely not. See, I was lying to them and myself. Jesus commands us in John's account of his life that we should love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And that quote is everything, isn't it? As I have loved you. If you know anything about Christianity, you know he loved us enough to die on a cross, sacrificing his life for ours. Maybe I should have sacrificed my pride, sacrificed my bitterness. If you're new to this church, or even if you've been coming here for years, and you're looking for people to open up to, but there's too much pressure creating that social contact on the limited time we have on a Sunday. We run several life groups that allow us to delve deeper into relationship with each other and God alongside each other. If you want more information, please feel free to email the front office. The email address is on the website. And when someone is opening up to us about something we don't understand, we have to be honest with them about it. We don't need all the answers. Often people just need someone to sit with, to exist alongside, to feel heard. They might say things we don't agree with. They might say things that confuse us. They might say things we just don't understand. But stay with them. Love them by being there for them. And if we don't have the mental space to deal with what is being presented to us, be honest with them about that as well. A relationship is two-way. It can't just be one person constantly unloading everything onto everyone else. And if we choose to engage in the conversation presented to us, don't use it as an excuse to condemn them for opening up to us. Because that 
that will just cause more hurt. And it is not our place to give that judgment. A pet peeve of mine is when people use the phrase, I'm saying this in love, as a passive aggressive term, using it as an excuse to say whatever they want. I've experienced this firsthand. An acquaintance of mine who was a Christian would spew venomous condemnation and hellfire at my friends and I, who were also Christians. They would guilt trip us accuse us of a bunch of things that were wrong in their eyes when a lot of the time they didn't understand what was happening or where we were coming from. And they would continue citing very specific passages from the Bible to justify their position rather than trying to see the bigger picture. See, that didn't come from a place of love. That came from a place of fear and pride no matter what label they stuck on it. If you know you do this, if you use love as an excuse to undermine other people and passive-aggressively put other people down, stop. That is not love. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't challenge people if they're doing stuff that might be against God. See, I've had other friends who have steered me back onto the right track more times than I can count. Shout out to my boys, Mark and Jacob, for that one. But it has to come from a place of loving cooperation, not patronizing dictation. One of Jesus' followers, named Peter, points this out in a letter he wrote to a bunch of other followers across modern-day Turkey saying that we should be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. We need to lift each other up, not push everyone else down. Be sympathetic to each other no matter what we're going through, even if we think what the other person has done is downright stupid. Even if we think the situation the other person is, is in is inherently sinful and bad. Even if we think the other person is a complete lost cause that we can't help with. We need to humble ourselves. See, we are not as big a deal as the love of God, the literal creator of everything we know, no matter how much we think we are. We are called to be a united body, working and growing together, not trying to make ourselves better by putting other people down. It is one of the most important things for us as people, for us as Christians. There's a reason why grow together is a part of our church purpose statement. But this idea of the church as a united body can be almost an intangible idea. When we think of this united body, what do we picture? I think often we can see it as something clinical, unfeeling, superficial in its relationships as it tries to maintain a fragile peace. That's not possible, though. We're human. We get annoyed at each other. The disciples are a great example of this. Take this bit from Luke's account of Jesus' life. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 46. An argument started among them as to which of them might be the greatest. Now, when we think of the disciples, at least in my experience, it's easy to have this image of them as holy people who must have been slightly above it all, slightly better than everyone else, because why else would Jesus go out of his way to pick them? We turn them, the disciples, into an unachievable goal, much like the idea of a united church. But they were real people with real emotions, real passion, real stubbornness, real egos. They are from all different walks of life whether that be class background, cultural background, profession, even age. They all had different experiences, so they all would have had a different opinion on what they thought was right. And it would be easy enough just to stop there, to leave it 
as an impossible task trying to get such a disparate group of people to get along. To give up on this idea of a united church because there's just too much disagreement. Maybe that's what we do when we think of people that different from us in our surroundings. But it doesn't end there, though. See, despite their human nature, they were united in a common cause. They were united in their devotion to Jesus. Even though they had different opinions on what was right, they had learned to listen to Christ and put his way ahead of their own, no matter how uncomfortable it made them, no matter how much they didn't understand what was happening. Isn't that mad? I hate it when I feel like I've lost an argument or a heated discussion because I feel like I've lost. I've had to concede to the other person's point and therefore I'm less of a person than them. But Christ calls us to listen to him, not our egos, not our pride. See, we are at our best when we're following him, not our personal interpretations of what he might like. Are we going to be this united body of Christ? Or are we just going to stay as a room full of Christians? See, I know that might come as a huge challenge to some of us. We may, intentionally or not, look down on what other people say, patronizing them because they don't think the same as us. Yet no one is immune to this. We all have to stay vigilant. We may also have grudges we haven't let go of yet. People may have hurt us in the church in ways that seem impossible to forgive. And I'm not saying that you should just go out there and forget whatever they did because who cares, lol, Jesus. There will be people we struggle with, no matter how likable we are. But by putting Jesus at the center of what we do, Our strength, our motivation in what we do no longer comes from ourselves and our relationships with other people. See, how are we going to be Christ on earth, bringing help and freedom to those who need it most if we spend all our time wallowing in awkwardness, in bitterness towards each other? Let's be honest. Honest with ourselves. Honest with each other. It's going to be hard. It's going to feel awkward. But we are going to get so much out of this. It's unreal. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you call us to be a united body. That we achieve so much more when we work together, when we love each other. I pray we learn to put aside our egos, put aside our pride, and humble ourselves to love each other as Christians. Amen. The band is now going to lead us in a time of sung worship. The words will come up on the screen, so feel free to join in at home if you want. Otherwise, just let the words wash over you and really hold on to that idea of us as a united church, humbling ourselves to love one another.
up her eyes, lift up her eyes, show the giver of life. We lift up her eyes, lift up her eyes, show the giver of life. We lift up her eyes, lift up her eyes, show the giver of life. We lift up her eyes, lift up her eyes, show the giver of life. We lift up her eyes, lift up her eyes, show the giver of life. Worship His 
much for joining us this week next week we've got part three of our series and Simon is going to come and talk to us about who is my neighbor until then stay safe